Today, I have four easy last minute fall DIYs. Keep watching. I'm so happy to be part of the Pumpkin Palooza. And this idea came from Kiki and Chantel. I'm gonna link all of the links below in the description box. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own. Number one, we're gonna do a fall truck sign. The idea of this collaboration is to use up everything that we have or a lot of what we have from fall with our pumpkins. So this truck has pumpkins on it, so I feel like it qualified. We're going to use some ribbons. We're going to use Jenga blocks. We can use a piece of jute for a tie. We can use a little sign here and mine is a five by seven, approximately. I'm going to use some Crafter Square cork. It is adhesive on the back. We're going to start by cutting down this little card. I'm going to take the insides out and cut off the back past that fold. Just cut as nicely and closely as you can to get a nice edge. Now with the backing still on this cork, I'm going to place it down, find my little edge here, and then cut it out. Use any type of frame you like and you can get those at Dollar Tree. So you're going to peel the backing off. This is so easy to work with. You can see that it's adhesive, very sticky on the back. And then place it down in there. I'm going to press it down with my fingers to make sure every little piece is flat in the corners. And then you can just take whatever type of tool you have. Mine came from plaid and I'm just going to smooth this out. Just like so. All right, so we're going to put down our card and I always like to do things kind of dimensional it gives a little more interest so I'm going to take some of these little foam stickers cut those down and I'm going to apply those in each corner you can use the little foam dots from Dollar Tree if you have them if you want to use those and then I'm going to peel off the back of the sticker and then place it down as centered as possible by eye and press it down onto the foam it does uh, stick down well with that so now if you want this to be a standing sign, you could take your Jenga blocks and go across the bottom. These are larger than the Dollar Tree blocks. I got these at the thrift store, but you can use whatever you have. I just want to make sure they don't extend past the edge of the frame because I don't want that to show. I'm always striving for, you know, a good high-end look, so we don't want anything to look jinky. See, if you want to hang it, you can put the hanger on like that. Now we're going to put a bow on there. And this is one of my favorite types of little bows to do for country or rustic type crafting. Just going to cut these off the same measurement for each one and I'm going to use three different types of ribbon. They are all wired and they have a variety of um, sizes and patterns. Two of these came from Dollar Tree and that plaid came from the thrift store, but I believe that is a brand that comes from Hobby Lobby. So we're gonna dovetail each one of these as well. And then we're gonna start stacking these pieces up. So we're just gonna alternate here. I like doing odd numbers so that um, you get a good variety and you can stack I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain. You can you can change up your pattern this way. Okay, so just gonna keep following my little pattern here and make it a little X. Then I'm gonna take a piece of jute, flip it over, kind of gather it in the middle, make sure that my ends are about equal on the sides. You see, I'm flipping it over. And then you're gonna wanna put more than one knot in here or it will fall apart. You can also use floral wire for this. You can use um, zip ties, whatever, you know, whatever you have. The idea is to use what you already have so we can get ready to go into the next season. And I have plenty of jute, I have a big roll. Okay, so you can see here, I'm just fluffing it out and then trimming it off. We're not gonna need that piece of jute. We won't be tying that on. And decide where you want your bow to go in the center or to the side and I feel like since the pumpkins are in the truck um, off to the right that this will balance it a little bit better if we put this off to the left glue it down you can clamp it if you plan on um, you know manipulating it anymore because you will pull it right off if the glue's not dry so here's some options you can put 
chipboard stuff on here. You can do more pumpkins over here, whatever you choose. Just embellish the center of your bow or you can leave it just as it is. I like this one because it kind of matches the core. If you're enjoying this content, consider subscribing. Thank you. All right, I have to show you this. This is a little vacuum that I was sent. Um, I'm not sponsored, but I want you to see this if you're a crafter. This works so nicely. Now, it's a little big. It's not like the ladybugs, but it does hold a lot. It's very easy to empty out that filter. It's very easy to work with, very easy to clean up, and I really enjoy it. I'm going to have the link in the description box if, you know, if you're interested in something like this. But this is real nice if you're a crafter. It gets up the glitter. It gets up the shavings when you sand stuff off. You can plug it in. It's rechargeable. It's really easy, really simple. And you can take that off. You can use different heads with it. It's a really nice little piece. Anyway, enough of that. We're gonna go on to project number two, which is a flameless pumpkin candle using some leftover napkins, some Mod Podge, a flameless candle, a brush, and then if you want some ribbons, you can use some ribbons as well. I'm just going to make this as simple as possible. This is my little flameless candle. You can get something similar to this at the Dollar Tree, and mine is about four inches tall. Use whatever you like. Make sure your batteries work. Okay, then you're gonna take those napkins Take one out, we're gonna trim it down to get the section that we like. And I need to sharpen my scissors, clearly. Right now, I'm just gonna kind of measure and see how much I'm gonna need of that napkin. And then we're gonna fussy cut. Yes, we're gonna fussy cut. And I'm not gonna make you watch all that. Nope, I'm gonna trim it down as much as possible, but I did leave some. You can see after it is glued down, that there is a little bit of overhang, so I'm just gonna trim it off. I decided not to show you how to glue this on to the candle, because I think everybody knows. You put Mod Podge down, and then you just lay it on there. That's it. So anyway, after it's dry, you can trim it down a little bit to make your pattern look a little bit better. You don't have that rough edge, but if you don't wanna do that, put it to the back, no one's gonna see it. All right, so then you're going to go back over it and seal it in once you get it the way you like it. Just like this, and then you're going to let it dry. There we go. That's how it looks when it's lit up. Number three is a pumpkin round. All right, so here we go with a variety of ribbons. I have some leftovers um, from the Dollar Tree. I have this that came from Goodwill. And then I have this round, I don't know where I got it from. Probably the thrift store, there's no tag, I don't know. This came from Dirt Cheap. It's a poster sign, I cut it down so that it would fit my round. Use any type of paper you want. You can use craft paper, you can use construction paper, you can use gift wrap, whatever you want. But I had this with the pumpkins on it and I've used it for a gather sign I've made in the past, which I love. So when I cut it down, and I'll be putting this on here. I'm gonna use some spray adhesive. Came from the thrift store. You can use a glue stick. You can use, I think Dollar Tree has some spray adhesive as well. Whatever you have that will stick something to something else, go ahead and use that. You can use Mod Podge if you want, but I didn't know how that would work with my two varied surfaces here. I'm gonna take my little tool that Plaid sent me, and I'm just gonna roll this out, make sure all the wrinkles are out. You've seen this before, I'm sure. We're gonna go around the edge and sand that down. Then I'm gonna clean my little table up. I'm gonna take a wet wipe and a little bit of my antiquing wax. And I'm going to rub it together and then we're gonna go around the white edge where the paper was frayed and we're just gonna darken it down a little bit. It blends it out a little bit better and gives it more of a rustic look. So that's what we're gonna do all the way around. And mine is kind of kind of sad. I could have taken a little more time on there, I think, to get those edges nice. And then I'm gonna take a piece of jute. I'm gonna tie through these little hangers that were already on the back. I don't wanna be bothered with putting two nails or two tacks up to hold this one sign. So I'm gonna keep going here, tie the other side, trim it down, and then so there we have our hanger. Now I'm going to use one of these cleans from Dollar Tree. I'm going to take my glue stick 
and carefully do this because it's kind of once you get the glue on it it will start to stick to your fingers so just just know that be aware have a little patience you can make it work and i'll show you what i do here because in the beginning it was a little bit of a struggle trying to get this to stick down not that it wouldn't stick but try to get the pattern to lay out straight so my fingers were sticking and when i would press it down it would try to lift away so then i just got a napkin and then just use the napkin to rub over it like this and it's very smooth and it works perfect so you could just do the same thing okay now we're going to measure out and for me i measured out two feet of this my kids are upstairs running through the house so forgive me if you can hear all that noise it is what it is it's a sunday morning all right we're going to cut this off dovetail it we're going to do the same thing with this and with this copper ribbon I think these look great together and it's a good way to use up some of those pieces that we have left over for fall that I didn't get to use in other projects. So you can see the type of bow I'm making and I make this project very simple by doing the same thing two more times with these other bows. Now I'm trying to make sure that the bow itself is a little bit smaller as we go up so that means the tails will be a little bit longer and this will just make it where you can see each layer you know a little bit better with each bow on top being a little bit smaller you can see more of the bow that's underneath it if that makes any sense okay so i'm just going to place this down on top of my jute i'm just flipping the whole thing over and i'm going to tie it off in the middle just like so more than one knot remember tying it's not good enough and then here we go we're fluffing it so now you can see each layer underneath so maybe it makes more sense what i was saying then i'm going to trim up what i need to trim up and yes i probably did cut a lot more ribbon than i needed to but for me when i craft i kind of go by how it feels i don't know if that's going to make any sense but that's how that's how i craft so now we just have some more little extra pieces now, here's some options for you. You can tie your bow on off to the side just a little bit. This is your first option. If you want to do it that way. Or you can glue it off to the side. Or you can glue it right in the center. Which is what I have chosen to do here. This is a very lightweight round. It is definitely not a whole wood round. It does have wood on one side though. But I think it looks really cute for what it is. What do you think? Okay, so I feel like I wanna add a little more and I have plenty of embellishments left over from fall. So I'm gonna grab up some little metal leaves that I had. These were all on that wire that you can see off to the side and I just used my wire cutters and cut them off. They came off of something else that I got at the thrift store. But I think they look good here. I think the color and the style looks nice with what we have going on. And once you decide where you want everything to be, of course, we're going to glue it down. And then you can fluff a little more. Just like so. If you want to add something in the middle of your bow, you can, but you don't have to. All right, number four is our thankful and blessed sign. We're going to use a calendar page. So easy. This is the October, is the back of the October 2022 these are the new calendars from Dollar Tree, but you can use any any page that you have from any calendars. Especially if you've got calendars from last year you still want to use. That little chalkboard sign is one that came, um, I think I got it at the thrift store, but I'm pretty sure you can get something very similar at Dollar Tree. You just want to put your paper down on there. I'm pressing with my fingers to crease it so I know where I want it to be when I get the glue on it. I'm taking my glue stick and going over the front. Now, this is an Elmer's glue stick, but you can use the Jot brand from Dollar Tree. It works just as good, in my opinion. Okay, so if you struggle when you are using a glue stick, because I don't think it applies for Mod Podge, but maybe so, and even though you've pressed it out and you've put out a thin layer, you still get some little bubbles that are in there that you can't get out. I've got a little tip for you in a minute on how you can help get those out. Gonna take a sanding block from Dollar Tree, 
or wherever you get your sandpaper from and just spray off your edges and it comes off nice and clean. So I'm taking a little stick pin here, a little sewing pin, just pressing slightly downward and at an angle into the little bubbles. And then you can just press it out with your little Cricut tool or any type of a old gift card and you can press some of the air out. Now I just wanted to show you that because I have no intention of getting all of those off. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna use a little bit of this ribbon that did come from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna edge this out. I wanna trim it, give it a little more of a finished look. We don't want this to scream, hey, I'm a calendar page. We want it to look like a piece of art. So here we go. I think this matches really nicely. I've left intentionally the edge, so you can see that black under there. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of the edge in the black on the top as well. Flip it over and wrap this around. You can cut this off straight if you want, but I think it gives it a better look, a more finished look, if you go ahead and flip it over so you can't see your edges. No one's gonna see the back. So there we go. So far so good, right? And we're gonna look at the ribbons and see which one is going to look the best, or maybe we can add a couple of layers. So I'm just gonna do this little simple bow. I've shown you lots of little bows in this video. And I'm gonna make sure that I have two loops on either end, just like so. Two here, two here, and I'm going to trim that off. Again with the scissors, snag it on everything. Oh my goodness, it's a struggle. All right, I'm gonna fold it in half to get my center. I'm gonna cut into the wire, just a little cut. I'm gonna go on the other side, same thing, little cut. This is gonna give us room to put our jute. So you're gonna cut a piece of jute just like so. The length isn't really that important as long as it's enough to tie. We're gonna slip it into the notches that we just made like this. Flip it over and then you're gonna pull it together. I'm doing this kind of slowly to make sure it looks the same on either side so that our bow looks right when we fluff it out. You can make this bigger. You can use more loops than this if you would like, but I think four is good enough for what we're doing here. We don't want anything to overpower our beautiful, thankful, and blessed sign because we are thankful and blessed, right? Everybody in this crafting community, everybody who's watching these videos does have something to be thankful for. Okay, so now we have that and then I'll make a little bow just to continue that beautiful ribbon that I love. I didn't get to use very much of it this year. And I'm going to tie it off. Just make a really simple shoelace bow here, just like that. Once you get it the way you want it, I know I'm gonna put it in the center. So for tails, here's an option. If you have a, a beautiful piece that you're working on and you don't wanna have tails that hang down and obscure your pretty print, then you can do it just like this and your little tails will go off to the side instead. So we're gonna make sure we cut that so that it will be a little bit longer and you can see it over the ends of your boat just like this. We're gonna pinch it in the middle and tie it off once we make sure that it is centered and that's what I'm doing there, making sure that it's right in the center of that bow. Now pull it down like this, tie it in a double knot, and then fluffing again, of course, trimming off these extra pieces. I'm gonna set that on the top. Isn't that cute? It's so simple. And put this little bow right in the center. You can skip the bigger bow if you want and just do the smaller bow, however you wanna do it. I'm gonna put some glue down and then I actually do clamp this. At this point, you don't see me clamping it, but uh, I do put a clamp on it to hold it down until the glue is dry. Here's an option for you. You can take any type of embellishment. I have a lot of these little wooden pumpkins that originally came from Target and you can put these down anywhere you want but I like it just like this. And we already have a hanger. So you can see mine is not perfect. Here we go. Here's our candle, all lit up and beautiful. Love that watercolor look. There's our wood round right there. There's our calendar page sign right here, thankful and blessed. And you can see all the little wrinkles and bubbles and I'm totally okay with that. I'm a rustic girl, it doesn't bother me. I hope you're feeling inspired to go ahead and use what you have left before you move on to your Christmas goodies. I thank you so much for watching. Again, be sure you check out the links below so you can see all the rest of the 
ladies from this pumpkin palooza playlist. Thank you so much, Kiki and Chantel, and I hope we get to work again together in the future. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.